Big car, two kids, and a wife. I'll probably be here for the rest of my life. I'm living on the island. When summer comes and winter falls, the island ladies go to shopping malls. Take daddy's credit card and charge it all. They're living on an island. I will live in a long island. Oh, you know it's so much fun. I'm living on the island. I'm just basking in the sun. Hey, Anthony, give me a vibe. Hello everybody and welcome to the Benny Rizzuti Show with my very special guest, Teddy Smith, Teddy, who came here all the way from the city. Okay. Te Teddy, thank you so much for coming. Oh, my pleasure, man. My pleasure, hey. brother. Yeah. Now, Teddy, you've been on, uh, you've been on uh, Comedy Central? Comedy Central, Fox News Red Eye, which that's weird. That's weird? <laughs> yeah. It it's a cool show, though, from what I've it, seen. It really is. It was a good show. I had fun. But it's, really nice. yeah, it's called The Red Eye for uh, what reason? Because it's on at 3 in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think too many people are up watching that. It's like, a lot of people tell me they, they, they missed it, but they had to record it so they could see it later in the day. You could find it. Nowadays, you can find everything on it. It goes to the internet. Yeah, everything. You, you, know. you find it, yeah. yeah. And uh, also, you're a big uh, city comic. You're playing. Uh, I play all the clubs. In all the, city. the clubs in the city. Can you name yeah. the clubs? Or, uh... <coughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> if we have to no, think about it. I don't want to seem like I'm bragging. Yeah. No. Tell. <laughs> I think because no. uh, this is going to be on the internet first. So let everybody know. Uh, right. I I play uh, the Broadway Comedy Club, the Greenwich Village Comedy Club, uh, Comic Strip, uh, Stand Up New York. Just you know. Danger Fields. Danger Fields. Uh, it's so many cool. clubs, man. Just so many. And I, uh, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know that on Long Island. I've played a couple of, I, actually, I just, I played the Broadway Comedy Club one Broadway. time. How you, how'd you like it? I did. I, I really liked it. Yeah. It was a great show, too. There was a lot of talent. Yeah, they always yeah. have a, they have a good crowd in there, you know. Yeah. A lot of uh, people from other countries come to, more people from the other countries come to the comedy clubs than Americans do, which is funny. <laughs> yeah, and they can understand what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Because they, you know, they got cable, whatever, uh, internet. So, yeah, they watch. Uh, they always think that we talk like the rappers do, though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. When I talk to them, they're like, yeah. you don't sound like, you know, Jay-Z. Okay. <laughs> That's what they Because I don't have Jay-Z's money yet. <laughs> now, I want to say something. I've known you on Facebook. We've been friends for a couple of years on Facebook. I didn't never got to see you live, but I've seen a lot of your uh, live, which we're going to show a couple of videos okay. during, during the show. I've seen you, your videos that I really enjoy. And on social media, though, some comedians are funny. And we... I talked to you about this earlier. Some comedians, that you are more, you you seem like you tell your opinion. You talk about what's what's on your, you know, what's on your mind. Yeah, and, that's my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do like, and some people who do the comedy after a while they get they're like they're always trying to be funny. You just talk and you say some uh, some things that are uh, I'll use the word enlightening because. When you do perform, you, uh, you'll say, I'm going to be at this club. You're very brief about it. You say, come see me. I'm at this club tonight. Only the enlightened ones can hear me. Yeah, and I say, uh, straight shots, no chasing. That's another, that's a different Which, You know what that means, right? No, I don't. Straight shot, you know, no chaser, just straightforward. Nothing, Stra no, 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 I'm not sugarcoating anything. I'm just <laughs> telling you you're going to hate it or you're going to love it, one or the other. Straight shot. Yeah, you had a shot before, right? Yeah, yeah. I've had a few. <laughs> so, what? Yeah, I look like, uh, yeah, I've had a few shots. So, so I know what you, yeah, yeah straight so just shot. think about it. Shot and nothing else after that. It's no, like, yeah. No, nothing to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, so, okay, because I've seen that and I didn't understand. So the straight shots is, that's yeah. great. And that that's your only, uh, you your slogan, I guess. Like you say, I'm going to, you have two, two different ones. You don't use... Both yeah, two, two different ones. And the only the enlightened ones can hear me. Is that like on this particular night you're going to be prophetic? Um, I don't try to be, 
but I just say things and then people, oh wow, I never thought of it like that. I never saw it like that. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much just like, <laughs> it, whatever whatever you get out of it, you know, and that's what I, I, I do it for that. I used to do it just to make people laugh, but now I make people laugh and I like to make people think too, you know, so. And th those are some of the us, great, yeah. Bring us closer together, you know what I mean? And we should be. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we should be. I'm not trying. When people fight it, though, they're like, get away! You know. <laughs> I'm going to say, um, I was born in 1955. So I was born when, uh, when I was 10 years old. That's when, you know, we were having the uh, civil rights movement. Different things were going on. Yeah. And I thought, because then the 70s came, and I was in the hippie era. And I thought we'd be beyond that. I thought really? we'd be in like I thought we'd be like they are in Star Trek. And you're still you know? in the hippie area. <laughs> <in> the <laughs> I'm wearing this at him because we're you know, right now we're all Americans and I want the country to I feel that, you know, we're people and we have to uh we have to bond again. We have to bond. Something's happened to us in our own country. And uh and I think all of everybody, you know, we have to bond. We have to we have to be a great humanitarian country. Do you think we were closer in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or now? I think uh, I think in the seven, uh, 70s was like the hippie period. So I, I thought we were going to I mean, I was, I was like a little kid. I, I don't really know. You know, I watch videos and stuff like that, and I feel that, man. I, I feel the 70s. Yeah, the 70s were very... Uh, it was like a very enlightening. People were friendly. You just people used to hitchhike. I had friends who would hitchhike cross country. So you hitchhike now, you safe. end up on the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the family's like, "What was he thinking yeah, of?" Like, like, we don't. See, you, yeah. you look at the guy. You're like, "Nah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead." I walk. <laughs> but so, but even me, I don't want. I used to pick people up. Now I won't pick anybody up hitchhiking. I don't even talk to people. Street, so. <laughs> well, in the, now you're not originally from New York, right? Originally from Maryland. From Maryland. Yeah. So do you find there's a difference from when you were in Maryland to when you're in New York? Do you find a difference with people? Oh, big difference. It's like, uh, see, I came from a small like place, a small area. You know? Right. Like It's called Riverdale, but nobody really knows about it. So I have to, I have to say D.C., Washington D.C., but it's a small, you know. My neighborhood is mixed, white. Oh yeah, white. yeah, you know. Yeah, that, I have to interrupt. I've been waiting for pizza. I ordered the pizza before. Here's uh, the it's delivery. About time, boy. man. We yeah, starving no. over here. Sorry, guys. All right, yeah. Tell Tony that uh, that's ta I'm taking it out of your tip. All right, yeah. tell him I own. Put it on my tab. Like, thank you. He's like, screw you. <laughs> what is it? Have a screw slice you, of pizza, Captain man. America. Captain America, yeah. Ooh. We don't have paper plates either. They were you made, stolen. You made that clear. See, what other live TV shows do you have? You can eat pizza. You this can is, eat this pizza. Is cool. <laughs> This is nice. And this guy's good. This pizza really Only is good. Benny show, you get pizza and conversation. Hey, that's it, man. Conversation with great people. Because I, I just felt I had, you know, as I said, I didn't, never got to see you live. Yeah. And uh, I would read you on Facebook. Then I... People think I I'm see. angry on Facebook. I don't understand that. You do come, you come off militant sometimes on Facebook. That's what people say. I'm like, militant? I'm far from militant. When they see you and meet you, but uh, well, because you're speaking like I see you speaking about things that uh, I see you speaking about about current what's going on currently with and it seems like you talk about our country and how we should you you speak a lot about love we should love each other more you you say yeah. that so it's a you see, know I get into that and then I read some other stuff, then it gets me all riled up, <laughs> and then I put, you know, I kind of like, I'm kind of like answering that guy's question when I post something on my wall. Right. Like, you know how you read, you just read comments and posts, and you're like, that was ignorant, and then you want to, 
you you want to uh, answer the guy's question, and then you but you answer it on your wall, and people think, okay, he's just being angry, but they don't realize there's something that somebody else said that made you post it on your wall. All right, yeah, it doesn't. So they they don't understand. You know why you posted it, but they're like. <laughs> What does that got to do with anything? Why? Where did this come from? I'm like, uh, you know, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a few times where you've written stuff, you know, and some people have written, and that, then I would just write something to you, and you'd write back, "Love you, Ben. I love your brother." You know, I, I try because to, you and I, you know, I'm trying to, uh, yeah, I'm trying to bring people together, but it's like they don't want to, they don't cooperate. You know? <laughs> and as I said, I thought it would happen. I thought, I thought by the '80s. The eighties still were a pretty cool time, but then I don't know what happened. It it's like there are things that there shouldn't be a race problem in this country anymore. Yeah, it's been it's been a race problem in this country since the day we stepped foot off that boat. <laughs> <laughs> but why? It shouldn't be, you know. I it, it wasn't for and even we speak about Mel Brooks, who made Blazing Saddles, which is a funny movie, which is one of the uh, funny. Mel Brooks said that he could not make Blazing Saddles now. No, he couldn't because everybody's so... I mean, like, you got to watch what you say, but now we're overly sensitive. You know what I mean? Like, right. is it me? Is it me? Or America has, like, can I say assholes are tight as shit in America? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just whoop, that's how the assholes are. They're really tight. You can't say anything. Like, you can't even say you people. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Especially yeah. white people. They cannot say you people. You can't say, excuse me, can you people? Who the hell are you calling you people? <laughs> Did he just say you people? <laughs> no, he didn't say you people. <laughs> what do you mean by you people? <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you got like, hey, I know I don't know your names as a lot of you. Right. Yeah, and you're afraid to say, you know, because women are the worst too. You can't say like Excuse me, miss. Bitch. You can't say that. Bitch. <laughs> Excuse me, bitch. Excuse me. Who are you calling? <laughs> you don't make enough money to call me, no bitch. But you can't say ma'am. You can't. You, some women will get offended by young lady. Old lady. Old lady, yeah. Fat lady. But, uh, but you're right. In this country, we're... What's wrong? What what happened? Because in as I said in the seventies, because people just like, abused it to the point where they just start saying stupid stuff, and it's like, all right, enough, you know. I I, I blame Obama, <laughs> <laughs> but you like Obama, right? You like him as a. It's just funny how it got really crazy when we got a black president. Like it's like I don't know if they they trying to teach us a lesson. Like you want another one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Cause they just went crazy. It's like they just can't handle that. Like Barack when he, was there for eight years. When he first came into office, everybody loved it. Everyone loved him. There, you know. And then uh, now, me, I know the country was. You know, the president before him, George W. drove us into the ground. He, he treated this country like you treat your apartment when you get evicted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the tragedy good. That's, when you leave. And now I go by a person's track record, so I'll be honest. I'm not a hundred percent. I don't. I'm not crazy about Obama as I was, and it, but it has nothing to do with race or anything. It has to do with uh, with certain things work that he's done. I don't look at him as a color. I look at him as my president. I'm not happy with the way would. I wasn't happy with Jimmy Carter. Some people but, still don't call him their president. They like that. They call him no, Obama. They don't call him the president. He's my president. But I. Yeah, your president. That's what they say. Your president. He's my. And I, yeah, they're all saying your president, right? But I looked at. He had a great track record. Where come, you know, I look at that book. That's what I try to look at for someone who's coming into office. George W. When he was governor of Texas, what he was known for was uh, he executed. I think the most people that anybody ever executed. Any. Governor or whatever executed. Really? And yes. Like yes. how many? In like say in a year. I would, in the year I don't know, but I'm thinking of a number like three hundred and something. He was just having fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Put another yeah. one on there. Put another yeah. one on there. <laughs> was, well, he's the one that uh, a comedian had said. Uh, I forget, famous comedian too. He said that uh, in Texas, he was from Texas. 
The guy with the scotch and the cigar? What, yeah, White, what's his name? They don't mess around in Texas. He said in Texas, he says they put in an express lane. That if you if you did it, if you committed the crime and they know it, you go straight, you get the death penalty, straight. right? Wow. He said other countries want to, uh, no, other states want to get rid of the death penalty. We put in an express lane. Yeah. He said, I mean, and, uh, and yeah, he was, that's one of the things he was known for was the executions and uh, financially, economically, he drove Texas into the ground economically. And that's what happened in this country. I mean, people don't realize you got politicians, you got the president, but somebody is above them. They can only do but so much. They're going to promise you this and that, but once they get in there, to me, I believe the president is a puppet. Somebody else is pulling the strings. You just don't see that person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we got some really powerful people. Extreme, like what do you call them, the 1% or Blue Bloods or whatever you want to call them. The, you know, but we have some people that is higher than the president and everybody else, you know. So, you know, people can blame the president all they want. But he can only do but so much. <laughs> That's what they got to realize. They got to realize that he can only do but so much, man. It's like... They're gonna pass. They go. They could pass laws, and they could veto them, or whatever. He has to do with you know. It's a group thing. It's not just him. Right. You know, he's a. Uh, <laughs> I, I used to say that uh, Obama was like. You ever see? Remember trading places? Yeah. You remember a Valentine? Right. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> with it. Obama's Valentine. <laughs> All right. Okay, I you get that. What I'm was, the rich white, yeah. Yeah, it's like because he they val they took Valentine in off the streets. Off the street. Remember uh, in the bathroom when he said, uh, "I don't want uh, Winthorpe back," and then he said, "You mean leave Valentine?" You know, as whatever. And then he's like, "You think I'll have, you know, yeah, run our country? Uh, I say our country, run, run our business, family business, our like, family oh, business." Yeah. I know that that was shocking in that movie when they actually that was, that was a message that was some real stuff that people didn't pick up on a lot of that you know which was it's real because uh, desperation has no color you know you put somebody in a bad situation they all gonna act the same way you know right yeah no matter what color no matter what race whatever oh yeah you put somebody in a really hard situation they gotta survive your survival instincts kick in. You gotta survive, you know. Right. I don't think people and wake up in the morning or grow up and go, "What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a drug dealer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> want to shoot some people, you know." That's crazy too. That's just. It's people funny. trying to survive. It's like you try to do it the right way, and then, then that doesn't work. So what do you do? Do you watch your kids starve? Do you watch it? You lose your place, or you, you know? You it starts to. Doing something. Not saying uh, it's right. I'm not no, saying no, it's right. No, no, no. And I agree. I and I know what, what you're going for. You're going for that. Under the right situation, you can be capable of robbing a bank or you know yeah. holding so stealing remember, someone's uh, Dick purse. And, Dick and Jane, the Jim Carrey movie. Yeah, remember that? Right. Suburban, yeah. uh, you know, couple, and next thing you know, they're robbing banks. It's yeah, because uh, he loses. He had a great job. He. Had, and if you're put in that situation, I could see that. You, if you're starving, I mean, even these futuristic movies where they run out of food and they start eating people. You mean uh, sometimes those movies are, are giving you a warning. <laughs> <laughs> you ever think about that sometimes? You remember, the, remember uh, those old futuristic movies and they show you that like, you can talk to the uh, TV screen and they have the watch where there's like a, 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 a phone and stuff. Yeah. Now they had that stuff. Now they have that. But when it yeah. came out, you wouldn't think like this. Eh, it's not going to happen. I thought it would. I was that kind of science fan. I I thought we'd get all, a lot of that stuff. You know, we'd get the automated, the, and now you can have, if you can afford it, that's the whole thing. Right. You can get all this stuff, and you can have that futuristic type house that will cook for you and do all these things, but you're going to have to work your whole life to afford to live like that. And that's what they tell you, they say, you work hard, you can achieve all this. And it's like, <laughs> really? <laughs> I know a lot of people work hard all their life and still can't you know, afford this stuff. I know, yeah. And it's getting tougher, but 
since we let's talk a little bit about comedy. When you perform, do you talk? When you perform and you go up, say you you had a conversation with someone like we just had, mm -hmm. and now you go on stage. Oh, I just turn it on, you know. Conversation, we could talk serious stuff, but when I, it's time for me to go to work, shut it down, go on stage, and do my thing and make people laugh. But I, will you bring any of that? If there was something that, that bothered you in the conversation, would you try to put a spin no, on it? No, I just tell it to stay stay here. I'm going to go on stage. I'll be right back. We can finish this when I get back, but All right. I, can't, I can't, can't bring that on stage, you know. You know. Unless well, it's funny. <laughs> if people, you know, I can make people laugh about it. Like I used to, I would, I I created a joke talking to people before I went on stage. Like I was like drinking and driving, right? And I was talking, we were talking about drinking and driving, and then the guy was like really upset because people drink and drive. I'm like, and I thought about it. I said people don't really want to drink and drive. You know what I mean? It's not that's nothing you set out to do. Like you don't sit at home going, you know what? I haven't been to the emergency room in a long time. <laughs> And that's what I told him. I was like, you really think people sit at home and they're like, yeah, I think I'm going to drink and drive. But no. It's just something. You get drunk and you're under the influence, right? Yeah. That's what they say. You're under the influence. What does that mean? You're being influenced by the alcohol. It alters your mind and you think you can do it. It's like it tells you, hey, you don't need to call no cab. <laughs> <laughs> you got a car right outside, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah you I know, can do it right. Yeah, I'm super bad. Come on. All you need to do is get up off the ground. <laughs> put your clothes back on and sit on <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes you probably forget you got like a sock over your hand and yeah. it looked funny, so you're driving with one hand while but, the sock. But I'm not saying you should drink and drive, I'm just saying like you know, people not trying to do it is And if you're with more than one person because you just brought back a story to me. My friends and I, we were barely drinking age back in, uh, this was like 72. And a friend of mine, we were at a bar. I was 16, so I wasn't, drinking age was 18. Four of us in a little Volkswagen bug. <laughs> Instead of going, my friend's father wasn't home. We had the house all to ourselves. He wanted to drive uh, about 10 miles to a bar in... Uh, near Nassau County. Right. So we drove to this bar, and the place was closed, of course. So we're driving back, and it's a bunch of, and we, we were buzzed. We were all, so we start singing songs in the car. And we're singing, and my friend is beeping the horn, and we're going down Main Street, and we're the only car. It's like 3.30 in the morning. So you were trying to get arrested, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened. That's what happened. We got busted. And back then... The police were notorious, really? and they had us, and they put us through a whole. Uh, they didn't. We didn't get arrested. You didn't get we, arrested. We didn't get arrested. You're drunk. You're screaming, but beeping a horn. We're singing, and uh, because they wanted us to, uh, there was a lot of trouble going on in a park out here on Long Island back then. Right. With drug dealing going on and different things. So they wanted us to go make a bond. Drug dealing. <laughs> like, yeah. nothing, you said like nothing big about it. Like, drug, little drug dealing. No, no, it was but the whole park, the whole park was like, uh, was like crazy, that people were hanging out in this park at night, and mm -hmm. I'm talking about like a big crowd, and they were getting buzzed on. They were, what they were smoking things, and they were smoking getting things. smoking things, <laughs> getting buzzed. Said smoking things, and they wanted us to go and make a buy. About wanted us to go and buy and then tell them who oh, we the got. Oh, the police? The police. So, so they made us a deal. He was being a snitch. He was a snitch. They huh? wanted to make us a snitch. So we never went. We told them, yes, we'd go. And then we didn't. So what they wound up doing was my friend who owned the car, who was, uh, you know, he was legal age, they went after him and busted him. And say, uh, really? they came back. Okay. And they just busted him. They couldn't get us because we were minors. How old were you? So they got, I was 16. 16? Yeah. Did you have a license? No. no I didn't have a license then. I think I might have my permit or something on me. Wow. Long Island kids getting in trouble. Well, you I know. Said you, you grew up in that kind of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Building. Where I lived, it was something like Long Island. You know, it was a mixed neighborhood. Like, my family first moved there, 
it was majority white. And then my family moved in. Then another family moved in. And then another black family moved in. It was like three. And they're like, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then the people started moving out. My father used to call it white flight. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like all oh, Latino now. And now my mother's like, there's a lot of them. Like, she turned into the racist now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Ma, there's too many of those people. She's like a, a, a Archie Bunker. She turned into an Archie Bunker. She, she did, huh? Yeah, they took over our church. <laughs> and then they had the parties, the late night parties. My mother was funny, though. When I was growing up, like the neighborhood, I, I, I'm a really lucky person to grow up in the neighborhood that I grew up in. I mean, it was beautiful, man. Like, we... We slept over each other's houses. We ate at each other's houses. We knew, we were so close in my neighborhood, we knew each other's cousins. Aunts nice, and yeah. stuff like that. Like, that's how close my neighborhood was. It was, I'm very lucky, man, because we didn't get in no trouble. We just, we had a good time. I had a good childhood, man. Really good childhood. That's I mean, great. I complain. I complain, man. I mean, had a lot of laughs. Were you like a... Uh... Were you the clown of the? Uh, I would neighbor? say things. I was so honest. It wasn't like I was trying to be funny. Yeah. But I would say things that were so honest that people would laugh. Like my brother used to instigate for me to say stuff. Like he'll point stuff out. <laughs> and he knew you would uh, come out with. Oh, all he that. knew it. It's like uh, I remember my mother's aunt. Uh, she came over, and I don't know why she came to me. I think my brother set, sent her over to say something to me because she came home, she's like, give me some sugar, you know. And that's the old black woman, like, give me some sugar. That right, yeah. Kids, you know what I mean? Like, you're Italian. You know. Yeah, we do the we, same thing. Same I used to do that with my yeah. son when he was little. Was we don't get along because we do the same stuff, you know. <laughs> she was like, give me some sugar. And I was like, mm-mm. And she's like, give me some sugar. And I got really upset, and I was honest, you know. So I was like, you don't need no sugar. You got diabetes. <laughs> and she's like, who told you that? She goes, man. <laughs> My brother's in the back cracking up. I'm like, oh, he used to love it. He loved it. Now, when you became a stand-up comedian, I read in your bio, you had a dream? Yeah, because I didn't know what I want to do with my life. Right. Because uh, <laughs> I was working at McDonald's. I wasn't a, you know, old. I was a young dude, but... I was working at McDonald's. My mother said, you can't be working here your entire life, so you got to do something. And then my brother went to computer school. And uh, that still didn't change me, though. I still was working at McDonald's. I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, somebody, this guy at McDonald's, that was, it was like my manager or something, and he went to this, this uh, little college-like thing, little uh, trade school, whatever. I don't know what he was, but he went there and... Uh, he came back and said, oh, I got this new job that pays this much money. And he made it sound so good. You know how people talk about stuff that they're doing and make you feel bad about your life? <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, uh, maybe my mother was right. Maybe I need to do something because it just seems so good. So I went to the school that he went to and uh, didn't like it. You know, okay. I did it. And I said, I don't like this. I gotta, but I got to do something because I'm getting older. You know, I was like, I was like, you know, maybe 20. So, All right, yeah. You know, I couldn't be working at McDonald's being a maintenance man. Like, <laughs> plus, I had to quit because people would come in like I knew from high school would come in and see me washing windows. Oh, man. And they yeah. would tease me, so I said, I got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, those jobs, I guess you reach a level where you're like. I went to school and I didn't like it, so I said, like, I got to do something. So, I'm not really a religious person. I mean, back then I probably was, but now I'm not more spiritual than anything. Now I don't, I don't ha I have nothing against people that's religious. Okay, but I'm just not. You know? <laughs> it's because you know that I'm religious. Yeah, so I'm not, I don't know, but I'm just saying, I don't. You, whatever gets you closer to the higher power, that's cool with me. But uh, I sat down, I kneeled down, and I prayed. You know, and I said, "Tell me what I'm supposed to do." I was really passionate too. I was like, "I need to know. Tell me what. What am I supposed to do?" And then I had this dream that I was performing on stage. And it was beautiful, man. It was like a crowd of people out there. Like, it was outside. And I felt the energy, and I, I was bowing and saying thank you, and the crowd was going crazy. And I was like, man, 
like that feeling. <laughs> but I knew I couldn't sing. So <laughs> I said, I ain't going to be no singer. And then I, somehow I just, comedy, I just went to the comedy. I went to the club, performed, did great. Um, my friend took me. I didn't have a car. So he took me, and then I was like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and then he's like, well, I got this new nighttime job, so I can't take you no more. I was like, nope, oh, that's the end of that one. <laughs> Let me get back on my knees again. <laughs> and then uh, I got a car. I saw this ad, and it was like uh, first time, first time buyers program where you don't need good, you don't have to have credit, or whatever. You just yeah. first time buyers. And I got the car, and I started doing stand up. Yeah. And how many years now have you been doing it? Uh, twenty five. Wow. Twenty five years. Yep, and I, I did it. It's funny, God, I used to do this club, and then I did it for like six months. And I was like, I want to get paid now. <laughs> and then it's like, you gotta do, you gotta do this for like two years before we pay you. And I said, like, hell with that. <laughs> and I left the club, went to another club, and another club they paid me to do a weekend because somebody didn't show up. This is the thing. I know this is how you know things are meant for you, because. I went to another club and I didn't know the people at the club, but somebody didn't show up. And they right. said, and my friend told a uh, friend told the owner, he said, "Hey, Teddy's a comedian. He's a new guy. He's really funny. Put him up." So he put me up. I killed. He said, "Come back next week. I want you to MC the weekend show." And I got paid like four hundred dollars. Wow. And I was like, wow. And I bought my mother a coat. I took nice. Yeah, I bought my mother. She still got that coat too. Oh her. yeah. Yeah, I bought her a coat, and she never forget it. She like. Twenty-five years later, she's like, "Remember the coat?" And she showed me the coat. Coat still looked new. <laughs> yeah. She took real good care of that coat. That's yeah. nice. She was proud of you. Yeah, that's Thank the you. first. That's what I did. My first uh, pay gig. I bought my mother a coat. That is great. That's great. You, you, you are like an Italian boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was married to an Italian woman. So oh, you were? Yeah. Yeah. We're not married now, but... <laughs> yeah, I know, which, that's a good segue. I want to show, I uh, promised our viewers we're going to show a video. I'd like to show a video of uh, you called uh, the bra Breaking Up. It's about you breaking up with someone. Oh, no! <laughs> so we're going to go to that video, and then we'll be right back with Teddy Smith, my very special guest, honored guest. Okay? I see... I see a lot of ladies in the audience. You know, I like, I like to talk to women, find out what you're thinking, you know? <laughs> like, ladies are always like, I'm looking for a good man. That's what I want, a good man. Some ladies are like, a oh, good man is hard to find. You know why? Because there aren't any. <laughs> you ladies are looking for a unicorn. <laughs> a mystical creature. I mean, don't get me wrong, we could be good for a little while. But you expect us to be good through the whole relationship? <laughs> you got a better chance of finding Bigfoot than that happening. Because every man got a little bad in him. Some got a little bit, some got a lot. There is no Mr. Right. We just a bunch of Mr. Ides. <laughs> Girl, how is he? He all right? <laughs> He'll do. But women, y'all ladies, y'all, you know, women not all that good either, y'all, you know. Y'all do some messed up stuff too, like break up with a guy and don't tell him. <laughs> he telling his boys, man, we in love, you know, we gonna get married. And you broke up with him six weeks ago. <laughs> he don't even know it. And breakups are hard. Women get mad and key your car and throw a brick through your windshield. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it don't bother men until we see you with somebody else. <laughs> That's when we get hurt. That's when we see that, it's like, it, it, like it, it hurts. Like, we look at you, we see you coming, and it really when you look real, and you start looking really good, too. <laughs> it's like, well, she, she couldn't work out when she was with me. <laughs> I was with her? And she'd be with some good-looking guy, and he got his stuff together, got a car and everything. <laughs> she didn't upgrade it on you now, you know. It's, and you like, and in your head you think, let me get myself together, because here she comes, she's going to say hi. Okay, I, I can't let her know this bothers me, okay. When she say, how you doing, just say, I'm doing good. I got a job now, you know, I'm getting, I'm just, all right, you know. And I'm, I'm going to school, 
you know, you start lying. I'm going to school. <laughs> Think about being a brain surgeon or something, you know. Okay. All right, you know, that's what you're saying in your brain. That's your brain saying that. But your heart, your heart's like, mm, I'm gonna say this the way I feel. Because <laughs> as soon as you say, hey, how you doing? Your heart goes, how you think I'm doing? And we're back with Teddy Smith. Teddy. Welcome back. That was that was a great video. That was very funny. I know you said that's uh oh, so young then. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna show at the end we're going to show uh I didn't get a chance to edit it, so okay. we're gonna show one that you did recently in July, I believe. A little piece. What? A little piece of it. Yeah, yeah, we'll show a little piece. From the beginning, like two or three minutes or so. Okay. We're showing that's current. That's uh that's a current uh, set of yours from July. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> now you you were saying while the video was on, you were saying that uh, I was married. You were married to an Italian woman. To an Italian woman. Which you know, people are like, "Is Italian? That's white." I was like, "No, nah, not really." <laughs> <laughs> what she they got, they got they got the same attitude as a black woman. <laughs> Italian woman ain't nothing but a black woman trapped in a white woman's body. <laughs> and then you have the Sicilian. <laughs> Oh, was your what part of Italy? Do you know what part of Italy your wife was from? No, she's because she's like Italian and Irish. Oh, okay, so that's a hell of a combination. <laughs> oh yeah, what's so funny is the Irish make fun of the Italians like crazy. Really? Oh boy, oh I, you have no idea they how they used to and people from Ireland like now it's fun, but it's like hey me Italian for like once they find out my name is Benny and stuff Benny Rizzuti. Yeah. I got a freaking Italian over here. <laughs> and then they just like the, you know, we kid. But I grew up in a neighborhood that was primarily uh, Irish. I had a lot of Irish around me, but then there were Italians and there were blacks. It was a very mixed neighborhood. But concentrated around me were a lot of Irish. And they used to tease me the ribbons I got. So for this. And then, but then they, got, they marry each other. Right. So <laughs> but they say they don't get along, but they marry each other. Yeah. See, I'm learning about, you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. I like, that's why I like talking to people like yourself, because you, you educate me on different things, you know? It's always, yeah. lear it's always a learning thing. You know, my you family know. is, uh, most of my family come from Sicily. My mom came from Sicily. Okay. So. so what about uh, your dad? Uh, that's uh, the, the end part of Italy. It's the boot of Italy. Like, there's the boot, and then it's a little island. Sicily, it's like its own island. Okay. And we used to... It, the Godfather. You, you right. saw the original I Godfather? Saw the, I saw the first one. Where Michael had to run away to, uh, he ran away because he killed those two guys. See, I, I used to love gangsters, though. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, what's, uh, Lucky Luciana. That was my boy. I was, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I love, what was the movie, uh, Mobsters. That's where I learned about him. Oh, okay. And then I just started doing research, and I was like, man, I like that dude. <laughs> yeah. I know you're not supposed to, but the dude was cool. Was they they glorify. Uh, yeah, but it's just, I'm not saying it's a good thing. It just, you admire that the way they they handle things, you know, the way they uh, come up. It's like, you, from nothing to, you know. I know, but it also, this country glorifies a lot of villains, and they glorify gangsters. And John Dillinger. Well, you know what's funny? They glorify, like you said, the, the gangsters. But the real gangsters, they make seem like they're just regular people. <laughs> 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 they don't glorify. They're like, oh, you like, you know. You know what I'm saying, Yeah, right? I know like, what you're saying. In reality. In rea yeah, the, like, real ones, the real ones that's really doing the gangster stuff is like you don't know about. Right. Like, like I would go to the movies to see The Godfather. But I don't want the mafia guys living next to me because yeah, I'm going to be scared. I'm going to sleep with one eye. Yeah, it's entertainment. It's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's cool, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but then, you know, that guy's connected. Ooh, then, you know, I was a bartender where I would get some guys who were connected coming in. Uh, what's his name? Paul, uh, he was, uh, he was head of the uh, Gambino family. Paul. Castellano? Yeah. When I... Uh, it was a story about him. Somebody bumped into him. They took they took they took the guy and took him for a ride and kind of like let him know what's up. <laughs> and I was thinking, man, I gotta watch myself. When I was walking around New York. I was like any old white guy. I was like, 
<laughs> sorry, sir. <laughs> He's like, you never know. It'd be like some old dude, and you like, you bump into him, and don't say excuse me. Next thing you know, you miss him. Come in our car. Yeah. Yeah, come, come on. Take you for a ride. Yeah. Like, oh, man. I bumped to the wrong old white dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never know. You never know when you meet in New York. That's true, yeah. That scared me, though, when it was like, he looked like he's a regular dude. You're like, man, you gotta be careful. Respect, yeah, yeah. Respect the old people. It's different now, though. I don't even know. I don't. I don't live in the. You live in the city. Yeah. So you get to see a lot of different things. I live in Harlem. So Harlem's changed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's changed. I knew it was changing when I saw like cafes and juice stores. <laughs> <laughs> People walking Yorkies. <laughs> I haven't seen a pit bull in years. <laughs> <laughs> the rent's going up. White people destroying Harlem. Is that what it is? Is it the white people? Or? <laughs> they move in and everything. The price is going up. And the store. Yeah, and they, they there, there goes them. the neighborhood. And you get <laughs> certain rich people. I don't think this has to do with any race. No, I, I think if you got money, you're gonna buy something. Yeah, and you but it's want changing. It, you're Harlem gonna... is changing though. It yeah. is. If you if you ever you go there now, it's changed a lot. Harlem, where I live, and like 125th Street. You know, okay. When I used yeah. to ride a train. I see white people on the train. I'm like, it's past 96th Street. What are they still? They must be lost. You know? <laughs> and they go past 145th, keep going up. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard there were areas like Lenox Avenue. You had to be careful at one time walking around. Well, my neighborhood was really bad. They yeah. said before I got there. Like, I didn't move there. I've been there like maybe four or five years or something. They say it was bad before that, but now it's really nice. It's cool. Yeah, that's nice. Right. Yeah. All neighborhoods change. I know. I want a, I want a, I want a dog. <laughs> yeah. I do. I see people walking their dogs, and I miss having a dog. But do you have the time to take care of a dog? No, I never did. But <laughs> even when I was a kid, I didn't have time to take care of the dog. But I wanted them. You know, my mother go. My mother would say, "You ain't gonna take care of it. I ain't getting you no dog because you're not gonna take care of it." And then. She was right. But <laughs> your mom took care yeah, of Yeah, she said, I'm going to end up taking care of it. I said, well, why are you mad? You knew you wanted to do it. So, <laughs> That's so funny. What's That's your problem? Yeah, if we all uh, go through that. Well, my son is 23 now. But we you know, we got a dog. I don't think he picked up the dog poop in the yard once when we had him. I don't think he did it. Well, once. that's why you let him out. Yeah. You, that's why. But then, yeah. <laughs> go out there and do your business, then come back and... Yeah, but then in our yard, you know, then we we had to clean it. Somebody has to clean it up, or you're gonna step in it. See, I, where I'm from, we had like the yard, like, you know, houses and stuff in the wood, the woods that were like, you know, in the park and stuff like that. So I taught my dog to jump the fence and go out there and go to the bathroom, and then <laughs> and then come back. So I didn't have a, I had to clean it up. I was uh, like, yeah. you know, go out there and do your business. My dog didn't. My dog, uh, we have a big yard. What kind of dog so, you have? I had a collie. I had a short head collie. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Oh yeah, I, I loved him. Short head collie, and his face looked almost like, like a wolf. Like, but he was, he loved to see. It. He loved it. He just they're extinct now, collies. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I'd like another one, but I, I know but, I'm. But you know what I'm talking about. You don't see like collies, those kind of dogs too much. Oh, maybe you see them in. I know, Long Island, like but you in said, the city, I don't see no collies. Well, what we were saying earlier, people have gotten, we've hardened ourselves. So you see more of the pit bull and the bull mastiff and the the uh, other. What are they? There's a pit bull, then there's that other one, that Rottweiler. Rottweiler. You see but, the friggin'. But now the pit bulls are like really big now. They got dogs that look like monsters now. I'm like, is that a dog? It's like the dog is like. Muscles and everything. Like, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> yeah, My father used to give me the same kind of dog. What kind did you have? German Shepherd. All right. Yeah. Always. But i like, they got other kind of dogs out there. <laughs> you can't find another type of dog. It's German Shepherd every time. And he, uh, he, he tried to, I asked him for a puppy for Christmas. Right. right? So I said, give me a puppy. He's like, I'll get you a puppy. He brings me a full-grown dog. <laughs> Try to pass it off as a puppy. He's like, here's your puppy. I'm like, that ain't no puppy. <laughs> right? The dog had gray stuff all around his mouth and everything. Like, that ain't no puppy. No puppy got gray stuff around his mouth. This puppy stress out a lot or something. 
He was trying to pass the dog, and he hated for the dog to bark. Oh yeah, and German Shepherd is. That's they the guard dogs. Yeah, that's their job, man. He's getting mad. The dog start barking. Like man, that's his job. He yeah. barks to let you know somebody's coming. And the German German Shepherd is good at scaring the heck out of a stranger. Yeah. They just they know how to look mean. And they could be, you know, they don't come up to you and be the greatest dog. But that's my dog was like that. He was he was uh, <laughs> show his teeth and everything. Yeah, yeah. But if you get past that, then he ain't got shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's like he would bark like crazy. Then somebody come to the gate and go, whoa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, get scared. Help yourself. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah, he would. He wouldn't do anything once they get in the gate. He wouldn't do anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my friend has too. my friend has two labs like that, and the one uh, big black lab is a big muscular that you know strong. Yeah. Every time I go to the door, that dog is like he's gonna run through the glass, <laughs> and the teeth are coming at. And then you said once you open the door and go in, he's like, oh, you ain't fall for that, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go relax in there. They got a bomb going. Big <laughs> yeah. lab. Yeah. Oh, man. And lay, this lab went like, and he does it every time. And I almost fall for it every time. I'm like, once I get yeah. past this. One day, he's a, one day so he may, funny. like, go for it. That is so funny. So what kind of dog would you like? Um, If I had my choice, uh, like I can get any, any kind of dog. Um, I like the wolf hybrid. That's a wolf mixed with like a husky or a malmute. I think or I German heard. Shepherd. All right, because <laughs> wolves are my favorite animal. I love wolves. Me too. So I want. I can't. I know I'm not supposed to have like a real wolf. Right. Like, so we can get a mixed one. So I like the wolf hybrid. But I like. I like all kinds of dogs. You know. I don't like the little dogs. Though, I'll be honest. I mean, you know, if you have a little, my cousin has a toy dog with the custom pocketbook. Too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's a beautiful. You people dog. put dogs in pocketbooks. And, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful dog, and everyone loves it. But to me, it's like my one cousin calls it a starter kit for a pet. The little, you know, the like, little dog. Because it's a little, yeah. But she's adorable. But for me, and that's why we haven't gotten another dog since my dog passed away. My wife and I can't agree. My wife wants a little dog, and I'm like, "That's not a dog. I got to You want a you want a dog? Want I would a like a collie. I would love, I love the, uh, what you're, the uh, husky. I love them. Yeah, that's I love husky. Me too. Yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful but, dogs. But they need room. They need. Uh, they have to run. Those dogs have to run. They need a lot of. Uh, they they can't be cooped up in a house or an apartment. But they go crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to, they need that. Because I, I love wolves too. It's so funny you say it. Yeah, I love wolves. I, I love actually did animals. some research and studying about different wolves from uh, like the European wolves. Beautiful, well, man. Wolves me too. The red wolf. I love the red wolf, which is a rare wolf. Yeah, you don't see too many of those. Right? No, they're more European. Okay. And you, you see them in Europe. You don't really see them in this country. I, yeah, I, I love animals. I'm an animal kind of guy, you know. Uh -huh. Like I, when I was married, I wanted a dog. I was living in California, and I wanted a dog. So my ex, my wife, she said uh, no. So I was like, all right, well I'll get a cat then. You know? <laughs> that was my way of like, you ain't gonna tell me what to do. So I got a cat, and I just try to train him to be a dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's like bark. Yeah. That's not how you're supposed to bark. <laughs> so I wanted, yeah. So I got a cat. So you got a cat? Yeah. Just any particular type of cat? No, it was a beautiful cat. Though. It was like, a, he was like kind of like brownish tan. He had little, little uh, spots on his stomach inside, and he had these blue eyes, and it's beautiful wow. cat, man. Yeah. Yeah. The problem was uh, I didn't know something was wrong with him. Cause I got him from a, I got him from a uh, shelter, you know. Okay. So you never know what you're getting. People that sell them to you know, but they don't let you know because they're trying to get rid of them. So, <laughs> I didn't know anything was wrong with him until I got home. And the cat would, like, stalk you. Yeah. Like, he would pray. It was like, I would go to the kitchen and he'd oh, scratch really? the shit out of me and bite my leg. Yeah. And he'd run. <laughs> but he wouldn't run like, you know, run. he just run. He run sideways. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with him. He ran sideways. And he would never sleep in the cat box. 
that we bought a cat bed. You know, we, we bought him like a cat bed. Right. And he wouldn't sleep in there. We every day we get up, he's sleeping in a box that's next to the trash can. Which you know, I start to think, I like flipping out on me and sleep in a box. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's wrong with this cat? I'm like, oh, this cat's a damn crack cat. <laughs> he's missing <laughs> teeth. Yeah, yeah. He's missing teeth. He slept on, in a box and like he flips out on you. You know. He ain't used to flip out on you. Wow. And he 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 destroyed my Christmas tree. That was the last straw. <laughs> Cause he kept. I don't know. Cats don't like Christmas Christmas trees or something. Does. <laughs> He kept messing with my Christmas tree. That's so so I said, you're yeah, out of here, buddy. And uh, that's I put it. him out, and he, he didn't care. <laughs> he, was, he, he just walked away like, man, I grew up in the streets. Like, he <laughs> in the streets. And he walked away, and I didn't see him for like three days. <laughs> what a funny, and th then he would come by to eat out? He came, I was going to work, and I was ready to get in my car, and then all of a sudden I looked down, and he's right there, like looking at me, like, mm. Tough. It's tough out here. Like he, he realized that, hey, I had it good. I'm sorry, man. I apologize for the tree and everything. My bad. No. Did you let him back in? No. No. No, I gave him away. I gave him away oh. to a friend. That's so funny you should say that because we have two cats. We had three. And every year with the Christmas tree, my wife puts up some decorative barricade. Yeah, they don't like that stuff. She bring, it's the balls that I hate. Oh, they love it. Yeah, they, they love, love like That's what I know what you're saying. And at weird hours of the night, you know, if being older, I have to wake up to go to the bathroom at like 3 in the morning. I get, and, <laughs> and old be like, get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, you guys, so I get up and the cats will be sleeping and they sense I'm up. And they run in, and it's dark. And they... They have a habit of running right into your legs and running right in front of me. And and I'm tripping. You know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't deal with these. Oh, yeah, they like to run in. I don't know if they, are they trying to trip you up or they just want attention? Because I don't know. But, yeah, they run right in. My wife was walking with uh, dinner one day, and they, one cat just ran right in front of her. Just... See, they, that's on purpose. <laughs> yeah. And now we have their brother and sister, Batman and Robin. And we brother and sister? We Yeah. You call them Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. But they're brother. And they're sister. brother and sister. So female and male. Female and male. So the male Which is Which one's Batman. Robin? Robin is the woman. Okay. It's the female. <laughs> like the real Batman and Robin. Yeah, Batman and Robin. So, <laughs> so anyway, and Robin's the one. She's the one that wants to eat all the time. She's always hungry, and then he'll just he'll lurk if he, if he sees she's getting fed, then he comes over because he's good. But he's like a dog. He goes after plastic. You can't leave any plastic around. He's, he chews things. He chews plastic? Yeah. And when, the other day, he was just looking at me. He was, I'm like, what are you doing? They don't have but no they, respect, though. They just, they don't come to you. Like, you call them, they come when they want to come. Cats. Like, cats have an, an attitude. Yeah. they like, you know, what do you want? And the other cat, Ash, who, uh, he passed away. We had him for like uh, 13 years or so. We had him a long time. Uh, the old guy. He was, you didn't go near him. Wow. People would be, sometimes he'd come out and I'd have company over and they'd say, we never knew you had a cat. And I said, because you don't want to go near this guy. Why? He was declawed. And still he would oh, attack. That, that hurts me. I know, yeah, yeah but like, I didn't know. So these two, Batman and Robin, are not declawed. I didn't have them, but my <laughs> wife regrets Batman it because... We have to clip them together. We clip, but the other guy, he didn't go. You, if you went to pet him, you better. He would give you a look like. The, you know, that's the, the clawed one. The declawed one. Yeah. The like, declawed one. If would I have. had these claws, I would <laughs> rip your ass. Off. <laughs> <laughs> you look, I got these claws, man. But he, you did the right thing. Take these claws he, away. Girl. Yeah, he would. He'd still that didn't stop him. He still try? Oh, he'd hit you with that. He'd bite you. He knew how he could. If he didn't want to be bothered, you know, the only one my son would grab him, and uh, because my son was young when we got him, so they kind of grew up together. Right. So my, my son would grab him, and that's the only time you'd see the cat with his eyes. He'd be like, "Help me, help me!" But cats they, don't like kids. Yeah. <laughs> I know that cats don't like kids <laughs> because kids don't know how to. Yeah. When we first got him, I guess one of the reasons I declawed him when we first got him. My son came up to me after a couple of days. Dad, 
A cat's supposed to ski. He had all these scratches on. My son had the same thing. He did, right? I mean, why you got all these scratches on your arm? And then that one night I caught him. He was trying to put Batman down the cat's throat. I was like, oh, that's why you got all these scratches on. Don't do that, you know, because kids don't know any better. And do and the right dog, a kid could beat on that dog. Hey, if you have the right dog with a great temperament, like that's what collies are great for. Right. Kids can beat on a collie, and a collie, a dog will get along with it. And when, yeah, when my son was here, the dog, <laughs> he'd love it, you know? A cat is different. No. A cat's like, you're going to pick them up, and then they get, they'll get they attack you, yeah. yeah. You're right, they don't like kids. They don't like kids. And dogs don't like the mailman. <laughs> Which is why. I don't know why. It's like, yeah. I always thought about that. Why do dogs, like, in my neighborhood, it was a dog named Jerry. He's a German right. shepherd. He's a chase the mailman all the time. I was like, why you don't like the mailman? I'm like, and I was thinking like maybe dogs were probably people back in the past life that couldn't pay their bills and stressed out and got a heart attack and like blame the mailman for it. Here he comes. He's got to So he's protecting yeah, he's the like, owners from getting like, uh, He's getting revenge. He's like, getting revenge, yeah. <laughs> he's got another late notice. I love animals. I like. To, I used to love going to the zoo. Stuff yeah. Like that. Yeah. Go to the zoo, and my dream is to have a nice, nice big house, and I have just animals all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it. Oh, you be careful. I'm not, not going to be crazy and have like I, lions and stuff like. I read that. about those people in the news. We've had on Long Island. We've had people with alligators in the bathtub, and in Harlem years ago, a guy had a lion and an alligator in his apartment. How do you have a lion in your apartment and nobody know about it? I don't know, yeah. They wouldn't they wouldn't have known about it, but the lion bit him. So he had to go to the hospital and explain how, you know, half his arm is missing. <laughs> yeah. Like what happened? Uh, <laughs> I got a I got a big cat. I got a big cat. They, that's when they found out and they went in there and said, Man, you ain't supposed to have no tiger or lion up in here. Wait. The lions, I don't know about, on, but on Long Island, we've had people with exotic snakes, and, and I'm talking about every room in the house has animals. I don't, I don't mess with we, snakes. No. We were going to show a video at the end. We have three minutes to go. Do you want to show a video or just... Uh, yeah. It's yeah? It's your show, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah show, but no, bro. today it's it. our show. Uncle yeah. Sam, you do it. Uncle yeah. Sam, all right. I just want to thank Teddy Smith for being on the show. Had a lot of fun, a lot of stories. I hope you come back soon. Okay, and uh, here's a current video. Look up Teddy Smith on social media. I want you to go see him. He plays in the clubs of Manhattan. Sometimes I'm doing, he comes Jokers. I'm doing Jokers Comedy Club in Chester, New York on yeah. Saturday. So they can come Saturday. see me. Yeah, I'm doing an hour show. A one hour yeah. show. Yeah. In, uh, Joker's what? Comedy Club in Chester, New York. In Chester, New York. Joker's Comedy Club. I've heard a Saturday. lot about that place. So we're going to end with uh, a little bit of the video. Uh, you can find the rest of this video on uh, uh, YouTube. So, on or, YouTube. Or, or Facebook. Or Facebook. Teddy Smith Facebook. Or Look Insta up Teddy Smith. Instagram, Prophet Teddy. <laughs> you will, only the enlightened ones. Only the enlightened ones can hear me. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. See you next week. Thank you, Teddy. Teddy Smith, come on! Teddy Smith! Oh, hey, shit, what happened? <laughs> Why you stop clapping when you see me? <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't feel right, man. <laughs> What's going on? I'm glad you're here. I hope I offend some people tonight. <laughs> no, I'm serious, too. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm getting tired of this old PC bullshit, right? Everybody overly sensitive. You can't say a goddamn thing no more, right? The white people are like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's a time when white people can say, nigger. And now you can't even say you people no more. <laughs> you can't say, excuse me, can you people? What the fuck you mean, you people? Oh, hell, I know he ain't say you people. <laughs> now you gotta explain to him and shit. Just calm down, I don't know your names. 